Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Raju from Smart AI Technology. Today we are going to see how to detect uh, brain tumor from MRI scanned images. So initially, what is this exactly mean? So actually, what happens is uh, when someone uh, scans the brain images using MRI machine, the scanned images will be having uh, images like this, which you can see here. So the brain uh, will be having some tumor that is spoiled uh, cells okay, that is spread all over or some part of the brain which is uh, very hard to detect the particular region because there will be some shaded region will also be there for proper treatment you need to have particular area where uh, you can uh, detect properly and treat it properly so that will be very hard for uh, doctors in all times to treat or to detect which which is the proper area to treat uh, so uh, this is a problem statement and uh, how we gonna do this in our case here what we have is we have a data set that contains a uh, tumor image and non tumor image when we have tumor image from that we have mask out of that image for non tumor image we have black image that is there is no mask at all mask nothing but there is no tumor region at all So we have that data set with us and we are going to use that data set and we are going to build a model which can give us if you feed any MRI scanned image it will give us the region which is the uh, uh, like tumor area of that brain. Uh, and one thing to uh, mention is that uh, so many people are watching and only 2.3% uh, people are uh, subscribing it. So if the content is very helpful you can subscribe and uh, like our channel here you can see on the screen initially uh, we are going to import all the libraries okay uh, pandas numpy and matplotlib if you want us uh, to explain about these libraries in depth it will take some more time so i am just uh, i will i will uh, explain a bit of bit about them okay pandas we actually used to create the data frames numpy is actually used to work with arrays and matplotlib is used to uh, plot any images or like that opencv is to work with any images and import the image and work with that glob is used to uh, import any uh, any amount of files or any images or any content of any folder their names their complete path can be accessed using glob and we are suppressing the warnings here we don't want any warnings to be displayed we may get confused otherwise so then uh, we are uh, importing seaborn which is used to uh, plot some uh, good uh, visual graphs uh, then matplotlib and then uh, we are going to scikit-learn here we are uh, taking classification report and confusion matrix we will see how we are uh, using this in the end in the end while we are building the model and then the next library is tensorflow and keras these are all sub functions of tensorflow and keras that we are using uh, for our purposes so we will see how we are doing that our first step is we need to uh, we need to mention what is the particular size of the image size of image uh, we are mentioning it at initial stage that is 256 cross 256 and uh, next i am giving path of the data set okay the here from the path how i will explain uh, i will uh, take out the images and mask paths so initially first what i will do is by using glob i will take all the paths then now uh, what i will do is wherever there is under mask i will make it null okay that means in our folders how images are placed is in one folder if there is image one dot png there will be its mask named image one underscore mask dot png it means this image name is just attached with under mask then it will become its mask so the next part here is how i am accessing the images which are appended with underscore mask those images are mask images which are not with underscore mask they are real images okay they are inputs and underscore mask uh, named images are mask uh, that is outputs so let us create two lists one is mask underscore files where we will append all mask paths okay and there will be another list train underscore files which will be having the entire uh, real image uh, 
fast. Here, what I am uh, trying to show you is how we try to use NP maximum to classify which mask is uh, like which mask is having the area region uh, which is having tumor and which is not having tumor. We are taking NP maximum. Okay, that's uh, if that is uh, greater than one, that means that particular mask is. Uh, having tumor that is the area the reason otherwise it is not okay here we are trying to classify uh, two things one is a uh, masked image and another one is non masked image it means like the mask which contains the region and which uh, doesn't contain region which contain region is a tumored uh, image mask and which doesn't contain uh, any uh, region in mask is non tumored image so based on that we are going to uh, make another data frame that will be having image and mask with the label label 0 means that particular image is that particular image is non tumored and if it is one it is tumored then what we are doing is we are trying to analyze like uh, in our data set what is the uh, ratio of tumor and non tumor uh, images uh, we are trying to check it okay if requires if we we are not happy with our results in the end we can make it as a balance by doing augmentation or like that and we can improve the accuracy that can be decided here itself so try to watch clearly and further also i will be giving some good tips then here I am splitting the data frame itself. Okay, uh, two data frame I am making. Data frame one, which is DF tumor, which contains all the images and mask uh, information of tumor images, and DF uh, underscore not tumor will be now having all the all the information of non tumor images with their mask. Okay, there there will be two things now. Then I am printing first value of them. You can see their names are also printed here. Now I just want to print them. I just want to uh, plot some images from each classes now. That is non tumor images, brain images, tumor brain images, non tumor mask images, and tumor mask images. Among I am trying to plot few images from all these classes. That's what I am using. I am doing using Matplotlib library. You can see that I am doing a for loop, and from for loop, first uh, five elements I am taking and I am printing it from which DF tumor high zero and one. It means you can see here what happens. Initially, it will be tumor images. First row will be tumor images. Second row will be tumor masks. Third row will be non-tumor images. Fourth row will be non-tumor masks. Next. After this, we need to split our data set into three parts. Uh, train, test and validation. For training, we are giving 90% of data. For testing, we are giving 5% per, for validation, we are giving 5%. Total 100% data, we are splitting like this. Here you can see in the uh, code. After that, what we are doing for augmentation. Uh, here, uh, the function we are creating that requires all these features. Uh, there is alternative you can mention them here otherwise you can directly take them and uh, put them here uh, instead uh, one second. yeah you can uh, you can replace them here okay you can replace them all these instead you can replace them there directly here okay instead of doing function but why we are doing function it's very easy to call so and one thing to remember is here we are using a library called image data generator why this li library being used image data generator library is used to convert any images into a array but before doing that image data generator is uh, having another uh, function within it okay uh, that is you can see here image data generator which is actually used to do the augmentation there are so many functions that can be used here i am i am taking all of default values default will be these things what is the rotation what is the uh, width shift height shift uh, brightness 
and sure range zoom range are zero you can you can give particular number and you can replace the there in the code you can experiment it with different values okay here i am taking default image data generator you can you can put so many values there and after that this image data generator function where you want to apply you want to apply it on all the images from train test and validation that we are doing below first i will call that image data generator okay and i will take all the images from the data frame that name is okay data frame okay from a image column okay that is input column okay and i am converting all the images to array and i am i am giving it as image generator after that i am doing the same thing for mask i am taking data frame and i am taking only mask column values that is mask images and i am i am doing the augmentation okay pushing this data to image data generator library that is nothing but augmentation after doing the augmentation i am sending it to mask generator after doing that we need to zip them we, uh, that is i will tell you uh, if you visit any fish market or any special market where, where you can't able to recognize object very easily then there will be object there will be tag with it then only first you will see the object then you will see the tag you will understand okay okay this is uh, fish one that tag name will be fish one okay then you will understand image plus label they both are attached together zip put together in the same way in our case what we will do is we will take the original image or we will take the mask we will zip them okay we will zip all the images and in the in the uh, in the same process what we will try to do is we will try to uh, normalize the images that means normal images will be having pixel size 0 to 255 each pixel uh, okay then we will divide each pixel by 255 that is we are normalizing that uh, here we i am trying to print uh, what is that, that uh, unit texture uh, we you this is a unit architecture so you can see that here below we defined it okay the same structure what are the layer stack of layers that we are using in the unit unit uh, architecture their image size image size is 256 256 and it's three dimensional image and once we take that we'll pass it through two convolution 2d one maxful 2d like that we are doing four times after that what we are doing we are merging them okay and then we are doing convolution and we are doing so many steps okay that are shown as the image here once we are able to build that unit architecture unit architecture is predefined architecture predefined uh, deep learning model that we actually use and there comes our next process is building the model that we will go here below uh, first the whatever the data we had we need to make it or shape it into such a form which can be used to train our deep learning model that we are doing here we are applying all the things and uh, batch size and everything and train gen and validation gen is created that is a data for training and data for validation is now created so then we are creating that uh, we are calling that unit model which we created above and after that you can see which optimizer we are using adam optimizer optimizer we are using callback you can call you can use callback otherwise you don't okay this is optional uh, if you want to save that model checkpoint dot uh, h5 files where you can uh, load it next time and use it okay we uh, instead of training it again and again In then we will go for compiling the model there we are doing model dot compile with the optimizer but you can see here loss which loss we are using bc dic loss what is this mean what is this iou mean what is dic coefficient mean for this we wrote the functions above we will see them okay what is the dice coefficient here uh, I, we have a definition for that actually what it says is it is two times the area of intersection of a and b divided by sum of a and b 
what this mean is if i have a image and then a mask the intersection area is multiplied by 2 and divided by sum of area of that uh, image and also the mask okay if we do this we will get dice coefficient and we will uh, here image nothing but output image of the uh, sorry uh, real image of the, uh, of the input you are feeding for example i will tell you you are giving a brain image as an input now it will predict as some mask mask okay but real mask we know that real mask and this mask okay this is image a this is image b in our case okay where this intersection area two times of that intersection area if you overlap both of them wherever uh, because we don't know the predicted area will not be perfectly there okay some area will be less or some area will be more that intersected area two times the intersected area divided by area of that uh, predicted and area of the original mask will be divided to get dice coefficient there is a logic okay here uh, that is mentioned here and in the same way io is uh, defined and i am asking here we are not taking normal loss and normal accuracy why because these are all uh, regression problems and especially in this case if we use binary accuracy or some uh, mean square error loss or like that you will never be getting a proper results that's not the proper way to use them in in this case so we are defining our own loss models and accuracy models we can't call it as accuracy but but uh, we can't say this is accuracy but that is a parameter which says the working uh, property okay just like an accuracy and then we are fitting that model and finally we will going to see all the history of the model from the history we are going to extract what we need validation loss and validation accuracy validation accuracy in our case nothing but validation iou train iou okay and uh, dice coefficient also we need to we need to plot that so we are doing all those things in the graph here once we do that we need to do the validation when we do validation and validation data set 79 percent accurate accurate data we are getting okay if you are feeding 100 images for 79 it's predicting proper mass and then to check it i need to check it so i am feeding some random images from test data and i am plotting them here you can see the results how properly it is giving this is a original image that is an input and this original mask but my model is predicting this thing it means it's very near okay there is a color difference because this is uh, rgb grb uh, bgr okay so if you convert into rgb it will become the same stuff uh, here you can see there is no mask there is no mask in here also here there is little bit difference that's what i was telling you while we are uh, calculating dice coefficient two times intersection intersection here will be more there is some area which is different like the whole uh, two, if you compare two masks intersection will be more but there is some area which is left so divided by these both two areas okay that we call as dice coefficient there's a dice coefficient we are telling how accurate is it or like that these are all some sample result that we are uh, plotting so if you want to use this into some application in real world application say into web application or user interface so that can be done that can be done i will be providing you the whole code uh, if you are able to integrate it uh, with user interface that's fine if not you can contact us directly i will help you to do that uh, our team will be always helpful for you uh, for further help uh, for further support you can reach us at any time Thank you for your patience and time. We'll see you in the next video. Don't uh, forget to subscribe, uh, subscribe and like our channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.